I have with me, of course, the directors of The Gray Man, the Rooster Brothers, Joe and Anthony. Hello, guys. How are you, man? Good. How are y'all doing today? Good. So I wanted to start off uh, with telling you guys that we actually had you on last year, but over Zoom. Mm -hmm. It was like the first week of our show. Uh, I think it was like March 5th of like last year. Yeah. We had you on the show. You were coming remote, and uh, we were treated to some pixelation. Uh, so that's, that's Joe on <laughs> yeah. the left. <laughs> <laughs> it's slightly more clear today. I yeah. think I was eating, so I just hit my pixelate button. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on here. My, pe oh, my pizza yeah. was fresh. I had, to get, I had to eat it while I was talking. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, that's so, that's always a dilemma yeah. that I have. So. so I had the, it's called the pizza pixelate button. The pizza pixelation, yeah. yeah. I'm familiar with it, yes. Yeah. You were actually filming The Gray Man at that period of time. Is that true? Yeah, probably, probably true. We shot it during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was not easy to execute during the pandemic. I mean, it was. Um, I feel like we've always been shooting the great. We shot that movie. <laughs> we got to France the day it opened after a year. We got to Prague the day it opened after a year. When did this get started? When did you first see a script? When did you first get looped into kind of the project? Uh, how'd you get involved? Ten year project. Back, yeah. Yeah, wow. It's been a Ten while. year project. Wow. Yeah, we were working on Winter Soldier, and we got a phone call from uh, a gentleman named Pollock. Patel, who had just read the book, loved it, said, I think you guys will really dig this. Mm -hmm. Take a look at it. Maybe you could do it after Winter Soldier. Yeah. So I started adapting it while we were shooting Winter Soldier. So they're companion pieces in a way. There's some similar thematics. They're both espionage. You know, um, Six is obviously uh, not a ser superhero or borderline superhero. <laughs> but um, uh, And then we had to put the script aside because we ended up taking Civil War and then Infinity War and then Endgame. Right. And then came back around. From Cherry and Infinity War and Endgame and all those movies, uh, what did you want to do differently uh, with The Gray Man and kind of what made this a, a fun project for you guys? Well, this, look at, we've never done a movie that's this purely action. You know, Joe and I have been action freaks since we've been very young. And we've played with action in various forms through through some of our storytelling, but we really wanted to make a movie that was just a gauntlet, you yeah. know, and that we could really chase uh, some of our favorite action movies of all times in terms of the feelings those movies gave us. Yeah. What did you guys do to expand on the action genre? Because I noticed a lot of uniqueness in it as compared to a lot of other action movies that have come before. Uh, but with this particular movie, how did you kind of try to push the action there genre There were a couple ahead? of things that we did. One is that the lead character is very different than Bond. He's like the anti-Bond. Yeah. You know, this is a proletariat uh, hero. You know, He's a very working class you know, tough guy who came from an abusive family, was in prison. The only reason he's in the CIA is that they pulled him out of prison and conscripted him to work for the CIA. He's never known freedom his whole life. He just traded one set of bars for another. So really a unique character in that regard. We also felt a very current character who's in existential crisis and, you know, but doesn't indulge any of the glamour of the craft. He's purely an assassin. And ultimately, you know, this is like a pugilistic parable between two characters who are the same, you know, different sides of the same coin yeah. in the Chris Evans character and the Ryan Gosling character. Uh, one, Ryan Gosling, his character leans towards humanity. There's somebody he cares about in the film that he wants to protect. It pulls him out of the gray and into the light he's forced to commit. Uh, and Evans' character, who is an agent of chaos, who, um, um, you know, uh, just uh, 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 you know, just wants to kill people. There's a lot of camera techniques that we use in the movie. Yeah, Anth and I we keep say, using the word chaos, but we like controlled chaos in our action. We wanted pure kinetic energy, so we're using what we call the speed. It's a speed drone. It's a very small drone, probably not much bigger than like these water bottles here, and uh, it could travel at 60, 70 miles an hour. It can wow. pass very close to actors without hurting anyone. Wow. Uh, go through small spaces, so it gives you um, shots that you've never seen before. Ooh. How was it uh, for the actors to work with something like that, something so advanced and new, and especially like flying <laughs> like to around them? A couple takes. It, to get it was out. actually yeah. pretty intimidating because that it moves so fast. Yeah. And here's the thing. It's operated by like a twenty-year-old with a VR headset on, who's just like standing there zoned with out. The joystick, and it's whipping by people. Yeah. It's like it's it's it is scary. Until you can hear it coming, and it goes past you like a Ferrari. But wow. it, here's the so, thing: the good news is it's light enough where even if it does hit you, it's not going to do serious damage. So uh, it's you right. know 
That's the, but it's still, it takes you a while to understand that. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Not to get off topic for a second, but I do have some questions coming in from our viewers right now uh, yep. that I would love to ask you. Um, something I think comes up a lot is that you guys often dip your hands in a lot of different genres. Uh, someone asks, uh, would you ever consider doing a horror movie? Sure. We love, love to do a horror mm-hmm. film. Yeah. I mean, Evil Dead, you know, is, uh, I don't know, I feel like we talk about movies constantly, but it's because <laughs> we're film fans. We grew up loving movies and we watched a lot of damn movies when we yeah. were younger. Uh, and, uh, you know, a couple of uh, uh, classic horror films are, you know, we're a main staple of our diet, Phantasm. I'd love to do a Phantasm movie. What about a, a musical? That yeah. too. <laughs> love to do a musical. In fact, we've been talking to a few contemporary artists, including The Weeknd, about, you know, trying to get a musical off the ground. Wow. I'd love to work with someone who wants to do an experimental musical that, you know, I thought what he did at the, uh, during his Super Bowl show was awesome. I'd yeah. love to see that as a movie. I want to focus uh, also on the characters uh, in The Gray Man, too, especially uh, the casting. What, what in your mind made uh, Chris Evans and Ryan Gosling such good positions for foils. Gosling's great because, you know, the gray man uh, doesn't doesn't talk much throughout the film, and you need someone that can convey an interior life in quiet moments. Mm-hmm. Nobody better at Gosling than that. I mean, he's fantastic at it. Uh, he's incredibly sublime that way. Um, but Gosling also has great physicality. He comes across like a complete badass on screen. But he has a very quirky sense of humor. In a lot of ways, this movie is a comedy. Uh, ultimately, the biggest priority of the film was like, how much fucking fun are you having? Mm-hmm. And are you laughing and entertained? Yeah. Um, and there's very few guys that, that have that combination of elements the way that Gosling did. Um, uh, and uh, Evans is, you know, uh, 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 you know, a through and through movie star. He did a decade of Marvel. He's got incredible range as an actor. We knew that from working with him. He's nothing like Captain America, and I don't mean that in some disparaging way. I just mean he's very charismatic. He's very funny. He's high energy. Right. You know, Cap is low key, stoic. You know, it's so hard to find somebody like Evans to want to play a villain. Yeah, it's true yeah. because and, and play it so well and so. Uh, I mean, the, the comedic chops on him were actually pretty crazy because yeah. it's not something that I feel like most people would know. Yeah, I guess from his uh, trajectory of being Captain America for ten yeah, years. Yeah, he started yeah, as the Human Torch, where he was more of a quip guy, you know. Mm-hmm. But that's part and of he the is thing. Very okay. funny that way, hanging yeah, out with him yeah. on set. I mean, you know, just getting to know him through the years. He has a delivery style in his conversation mm-hmm. that's very rat a tat tat. He's a great storyteller. He's very funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and it's just we we were looking for something for him that lets him to let him use those muscles. Yeah, I remember Evan saying, you know, oh, you know, it's gonna be a pain in the ass, but I want to do a mustache. We're like, why is it a pain in the ass? He goes, I'm gonna have to hide this for months because <laughs> if people see me in a mustache, it's gonna be all over Twitter. It's gonna become this big conversation. Yeah, you um, gotta make start making bald caps for mustaches now. I yes, think that's, that's yeah. the thing you gotta be doing. Yeah. <laughs> so kind of going off that comedy aspect, right? This movie has so much comedy in it. Yeah. I feel like you guys like your careers, arrest development, community, all over, I feel like you've been able to trickle some comedy in. Um, how, how do you direct comedy and how do you go about injecting that into everything you do? You know, we're very, in general, Joe and I are very performer oriented. Mm-hmm. We love actors. Joe even trained as an actor. So we, you know, we're, we're very tuned <laughs> into it. And, and it's, it's something that like, in order to be funny, you have to be comfortable, you know, yes. like to really get the best out of comedic performers, you have to sort of get them in their space, in their zone and let them do their thing. Cause it's very ephemeral comedy. It's not something you can sort of dial up. Yeah. Uh, you know, because you can't take anything too seriously. Um, and I, f- that's in, that's in everything that we do. Yeah. That's a great outlook. And you can yeah. see it in all the movies too, because you know, you, you go to the movies, you want to have a good time, right? Yeah. Yeah. right? And of course, you can be introspective. You can do all these other things. But at the end of the day, you're going to the movies to have a good time. You don't want to walk yeah, in traffic when point. it's mm-hmm. over, right? Yeah. It also yeah. can, like, I don't know, the world seems to be getting more complicated by the day. So do you really want to, you know, you're depressed in your daily life. Do you want to walk in a theater and get even more depressed to walk back out into the depression? You know, our but, job you, is to make something that gives you a little bit of a release, allows you to go in a movie theater where it's easier to address some issues. There are some thematics in this that are challenging and things like that. If you want to embrace those kinds of things, there are things that are relevant that are going on in our our world that are in the movie, but it's done in a way where it's at arm's length. You can laugh about it. You can let off steam. You can have some therapy. And then you can go confront 
the crazy fucking world that we're in. <laughs> I, th- I think your point, though, about like the movies that are entertaining, it's like when, you, when Joe and I grew up, we watched everything. We yeah. watched a lot of really obscure stuff, all the popular stuff, etc. But I think somewhere along the way, you know, you start to learn that like the obscure stuff that you're into, the darker stuff, the non-entertaining stuff, you can't really talk about it with anybody because nobody else is watching it. Right. But the, the stuff that's entertaining, everybody else is watching. So you can dialogue with everybody you know that's about right. it. And there's just something about that energy. Com- community yeah. building. It binds people together. It doesn't matter race, creed, color, whether you're red, red state, blue state, doesn't matter. You're right? You watch it all the same and everyone reacts to it in different ways. And then you can engage in a dialogue about it. Every time I hear about you guys, I hear about your success. And I hear about how great you're doing and how many movies that you're behind. Um, I, I would just like to know a, a time in your lives where you maybe felt more defeated. Um, or maybe a time where you felt uh, not exactly at your best um, when being in this position, in this job. Wow, this you morning. know. This morning. This <laughs> morning. Uh, I mean, a, look, yeah, just tired. It's, it's uh, true. It's like, it, look at, it is, um, look at, movie tw- making well, is hard. That's a funny but, it's a 25-year overnight success story. I mean, yeah. this is not well, that's, like, that's where I was going to go. I, like, I've dyed all the gray out. I mean, this is not, you know, we it's are. It's looking good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, there was a lot of time early in the career, especially, where, you know, nobody was interested in what we were doing. You know, Joe and I were basically making nobody. no budget. Nobody. I want to reiterate Yeah, like that. literally nobody. Nobody. No matter how hard we tried. Oh. You know, so we, we, we were sort of no-budget filmmakers. We'd mm-hmm. make a movie. We tried but a to, lot of people you know, walked out of yeah. at a at a film festival. The only one who didn't walk out was Steven Soderbergh, who happened to be a very influential filmmaker. So this is a, a shoestring Cinderella story that took twenty five years to play out. Because that we then went from working with Soderbergh to make a movie called Welcome to Collinwood, that the budget was eight million and it made 300,000 in movie theaters. So that should have been the end of our career right there. We got lucky, then made a TV show that only lasted one season. Got and the canceled. show was called Lucky, oddly it was, The show was called Lucky. <laughs> but Ron Howard loved Lucky and asked us to do Arrested Development. We then made Arrested Development where we were told every week we were working on that show that it was going to get canceled. Then it happened to win the Emmy. It saved the show, turned into community. I mean, it's just a... It's a long series of, uh, of you know, uh, uh, bottom of the ninth comebacks. Yeah. Um, but um, but look at, uh, fail, you know, look at so it. As every, everybody says, failure is important, right? You learn from your failures, and you may learn more from your failures than you do your successes. So, look, it's, it's, you got to do it because you love it, yeah. right? And, like, hopefully you find a way to make a living doing it. Well, um, Anthony, Joe, uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. Such a pleasure to talk to you.